Cymbeline is a similar romance in that things, they, he thinks death is going to win, and life actually wins in the end. Um, and I interviewed a, a director about it. It was an interview with Ted Burns, pretending it was Burns. <laughs> an interview. And she expressed to me how she completely, she very much believed that, that the end of that play was false. That the, that, that there were, you know, that she didn't believe in the, 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 what I believed in the play, which was that I thought something changed, that some grace existed, and that that grace was somehow, it was manifest in the play, and in simply it's manifest slightly through higher powers, but it really is manifest through the character of Imogen, the woman. So I didn't hire her. I didn't ask her to do the show. Not because I think she was wrong, I just couldn't support her. I wouldn't know how to produce that. I wouldn't know what to say. Um, this is, I read this play younger as a very Catholic play, where he had the ability to put his Catholicism into the play. And it's just, it's like a one-to-one -one ratio. It's Old Testament, New Testament. Someone rises from the dead, I mean, I mean, it is right there. And the, the first part is an Old Testament, and the second part is a New Testament. That's how I read it. And there's a book that supports me. Thank God, I thought I was there. <laughs> that Bill Rausch shared with me, because Bill Rausch was raised a Catholic as well. Uh, um, and so we shared the same thing. I don't think of it that way now. I think there is a divine in the play, but I think it's the human. And how do you, how, where do you come from? Where, do you mind my asking, were you raised religiously? We? They're, so they're, our, they're our, both of our parents, so we're, tell them where you're we're from. from the Virgin Islands. We're from St. Croix in the Virgin Islands. Um, my dad is, and his family is from the Virgin Islands. My mom's from England. Both of them were raised Catholic. Catholic. So both of our parents were raised Catholic. And we were not. And we were not. We, we were raised, like, we went to the, I'm sure when we were in the Virgin Islands, we went to Christmas at a Catholic church. You know, we, we went to the big religious ceremonies, but we didn't go every week. And then we moved to Hawaii. And we found in Hawaii a Methodist church that had hula lessons. Yeah. And we were like, oh, for dance classes. We'll go in for that. And actually, we then we moved here and we, we went actually to Lake Park, Lake Park Methodist, Methodist Church, which was a primarily Japanese American. American Methodist church in that we now, where we're staying right now, is like two blocks away. away. Yeah. Um, so in, in a funny way, we were never told we had to go to church, but it was like, we loved ritual. I think, I, I, I'll speak for myself, I think that there was something about, here is a place where we meditate on what it is to be in the world, we sing songs, sing, that was sing a in huge part of you know, church. all of those things, and, and so we moved, you know, we moved a lot growing up, but I'll say, the Lake Park Methodist Church here, in terms of a community of people who have gathered to meditate on what it is to be in the world and to try to do good, felt very rooted at that church and very a part of, of, very influential to us. And then when we were in Florida, so we stayed with Methodist, United Methodist, you know, we, we kind of tried out a couple of other places, but that always seemed to be the place where I could still go in and say, I believe in God and I love the teachings of Jesus, but I also love Buddha. What do you think about that? And, you know, in, in the churches we found, were the churches where they got to say, you okay, yeah, cool. You didn't go, it wasn't like a lever and you there was no, I did not fall straight down. <laughs> when I was confirmed in the, in the Methodist church, you know, in seventh grade you get confirmed, and, and I thanked God the Father and the Mother, and they said, oh, yes, thank you, yes. So, 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 you know, I, My mother would have stopped. <laughs> But for me, there's something, um, there's something about faith uh, that's always been very present. And I think for our mom, who we were raised with, you know, who we lived with for most of the time growing up, while she's not, I feel like her, her Catholicism in, in, in a way of like acts and service, she talks about even more now. There are many things that she talks about now that she didn't really push upon us as kids, 
But now looking back, I, I realize, oh, that was very foundational. Like she actually does not talk the talk of it. She's, she's a teacher, she's not a, about talking talk, she's all about doing. So I think she, I think there are a lot of tenets, basic tenets that she tried to live by, but she doesn't believe in strict dogma. So she says like, what is it to be a good person? How do you try to take the spirit of good deeds that came to her in Catholicism of Jesus, but that she also believes could come to a lot of different people in a lot of different places in a lot of different ways. So, so how does so, that play out in the play? Do you find yourself, uh, yeah? I mean, well, I was gonna say, I feel like we went to the church of Angela, Angela McGregor, who's our mom, and I think this idea of seeing these characters who are, like I imagine her in the play as Paulina. Like I see these characters who, I feel as though watching the characters navigate the circumstances they find them in helps me to identify people in my life who I feel like, oh, I can see the relationship between this person that I know. And I feel as though the characters are very real. Um, and I also feel like there's something really important about the language <coughs> in the play that relates to biblical language and my confirmation class in which one of the exercises that has stuck with me forever, um, since I was 12 or so, was an exercise where we were given a piece of scripture with no punctuation, and we're asked to place punctuation. And depending on where we place the punctuation, the story was, it was like the stories were this, were this far apart. Um, and that has stuck with me as we are going through the language of this play and where the emphasis lies and as we, you know, as the cuts are made to this play, what is still the truth of the play? And I feel as though that, not just a love of language, but an understanding of the power of language and the possibility of misinterpretation um, became so evident and clear to me in this exercise that stuck with me. I'll, I'll say to your how does this manifest in the play? I was listening to NPR yesterday, and there was a whole series on awe and wonder. And I was supposed to take a 10 minute drive, and I just drove around for an hour so I could hear the whole hour long program. And they talked about awe being something that often has an element of, of fear in it, but also that there's a vastness, and that you have to, you have to expand your mind to accept something that you didn't think was possible before. And wonder being a similar phenomenon, but that you want to go towards, you know, that awe sometimes makes you want to step back and wonder makes you want to step forward. And I think that the religion, so there's a, a line of like do good, try to do good in the world. I think that, that was a, a tenant. Love thy neighbor as thyself. I feel like there are, there are some of those messages that were really put into our world into our um, psyche, I'll say, but also the idea of believing in something that you cannot see, believing in what is miraculous. And sometimes what is miraculous is actually forgiveness. Sometimes what is miraculous is personal transformation. And sometimes what is miraculous is that there are things I do not understand. I have some very smart scientist friends who are like, at Harvard and MIT and the Broad Institute, and some of the in ways that we can cal that we can calculate really brilliant people who always say, "I do not know." I do. I. I we leave. We leave room for the possibility that there is so much more that is unknown than what is known. And so I feel like this play and and our our association with religion as we grew up leaves room for the miraculous and that there are things that we cannot always explain. 